African-English composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor graduated from the Royal College of Music in London in 1897. In 1898, just 22 years old, he composed the cantata that would turn him into an overnight sensation, Hiawatha's Wedding Feast, based on the epic poem The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. We don't know why this young composer from England was inspired by the poetry of Portland's own Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow was immensely popular during the Victorian period, and many other composers turned to his poetry for musical inspiration, among them Antonin Dvorak, Franz Liszt, Arthur Sullivan, Edward Elgar, and Benjamin Britten. Coleridge Taylor would go on to compose nearly two dozen compositions based on Longfellow's poetry. The Longfellow Chorus presented a rare modern performance of the complete Song of Hiawatha in Merrill Auditorium on March 16 and 17, 2013, and we will listen tonight to Part 1, Hiawatha's Wedding Feast, as performed on March 16, 2013. Hiawatha and his grandmother, Nokomis, and their talented friends, Papakiwis the dancer, Chibiabus the musician, and Iagu the storyteller, really knew how to put on a good wedding. On the night Hiawatha married Minnehaha, there was feasting, singing, dancing, and storytelling. As Hiawatha's wedding feast opens, the chorus provides a list of menu items from the celebrated meal, including haunch of deer, hump of bison, buffalo marrow, freshly caught sturgeon, and wild rice from the river. After the meal, Nokomis implores the dancer, the handsome Papa Kiwis, to dance for everyone, and as you'll hear, pacing like a panther, he puts on a dizzying display. Every good wedding needs a good wedding singer, and next, the guests beg Hiawatha's friend, the musician Chibiabus, to sing a love song. This he does, On Away, Awake, Beloved, which was one of the most popular songs of the late Victorian period. Nearing the conclusion of this rarely performed cantata, the boastful storyteller, Iagu, jealous of the applause given Chibiabus, spins a magical tale of adventure after which the guests depart, leaving Hiawatha happy with the night and Minnehaha. We listen to tenor soloist Roderick Dixon and the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra conducted by Charles Kaufman, performing Hiawatha's Wedding Feast by Samuel Coleridge Taylor from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival.
Heart, 
We've been listening to excerpts from the Longfellow Choral Festival in Merrill Auditorium, Portland, Maine, recorded on March 16 and 17, 2013. On tonight's program, we've heard various compositions by Samuel Coleridge Taylor, Keep Me From Sinking Down for Violin and Orchestra, the Bambula Rhapsodic Dance, the Violin Concerto in G Minor, and Hiawatha's Wedding Feast, as performed by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Ty Murray and Lydia Forbes Violin Soloists, and Roderick Dixon, tenor. Thanks for joining us this evening for Main Stage on MPBN. Tonight's program has been made available to MPBN by the Longfellow Chorus. For more information about Main Stage on MPBN, please visit mpbn.net. For more information about the Longfellow Chorus, visit longfellowchorus.com. Good evening. I'm Charles Kaufman, Artistic Director of the Longfellow Chorus in Portland. Tonight on Main Stage, we complete our broadcast from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival in Merrill Auditorium of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's cantata setting of the epic poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, The Song of Hiawatha. As a poem and as a cantata, Hiawatha tells the story of the native Algonquin prophet Hiawatha, son of the West Wind and of Winona, daughter of Nokomis, and of his vision of the future at the point of contact in the 17th century between Native American tribes and people from Europe. As we heard in our performance of part one, Hiawatha's Wedding Feast, first broadcast on main stage in August 2014, Hiawatha has married Minnehaha on a midsummer day and night full of feasting, singing, dancing, and storytelling. We begin tonight's broadcast with the next segment of Coleridge Taylor's Song of Hiawatha, the death of Minnehaha. Winter in the forest bordering Gichigume, Lake Superior, in what is now the upper Midwest, is especially severe, and the people are threatened with starvation and disease. As sung by soprano soloist Angela Brown and baritone soloist Robert Honeysucker, two apparitions enter Hiawatha's wigwam uninvited, the one representing famine and the other fever. They address themselves exclusively to Minnehaha, who trembles before them. Taking his mighty bow of ash tree and his quiver full of arrows, Hiawatha rushes out into the forest in search of food, and we hear Robert Honeysucker as Hiawatha beseeching the mighty spirit Gichi Manito to help him save his people and his bride from starvation. No answer comes but the echoing of his anguished cry, Minnehaha. Hiawatha recalls the warm summer days when he and Minnehaha looked forward to their happy future. In the wigwam, Nokomis, Hiawatha's grandmother, as sung by soprano soloist Angela Brown, attempts to comfort Minnehaha during her feverish hallucinations in which she feels the icy fingers of Paguk, spirit of death, clutching her own. Minnehaha cries out for Hiawatha, and hearing his name from miles away, he rushes home. But as he approaches, he now hears Nokomis, as sung by Angela Brown, wailing her song of lamentation, Wahanomin, one of Coleridge Taylor's most touching arias. Hiawatha, as sung by Robert Honeysucker, and then the Longfellow Chorus, each in turn sing, Wahanomin, would that I had perished for you. And Hiawatha sinks into a seven-day, seven-night period of grief, which ends in Minnehaha's funeral march and burial, a hidden gem of Victorian music, and the moving final aria and chorus, Farewell, said he, Minnehaha. We listen to the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman, conductor, with Angela Brown, soprano, and Robert Honeysucker, baritone, performing Samuel Coleridge Taylor's The Death of Minnehaha from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival.
We've heard The Death of Minnehaha by Samuel Coleridge Taylor, as performed by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman, conductor, with Angela Brown, soprano, and Robert Honeysucker, baritone, from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival in Merrill Auditorium. Coleridge Taylor's cantata setting of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's The Song of Hiawatha contains four sections, Hiawatha's Wedding Feast, Part 1, and The Death of Minnehaha, Part 2, and we'll listen later tonight to part four, Hiawatha's Departure. Coleridge Taylor's Overture to Hiawatha comprises part three and was meant to be an instrumental interlude between the death of Minnehaha and Hiawatha's departure. Composed in 1899, the Overture to Hiawatha represents one of the 23-year-old African-English composer's first attempts to blend elements of African-American spiritual into his music. Coleridge Taylor has based his Hiawatha Overture on the opening fragment of the alternate tune of the spiritual Nobody Knows the Trouble I See, first sung by the Fisk Jubilee Singers, whose leader, Frederick J. Luden, Coleridge Taylor had met at some point in England during the late 1890s. 
It's interesting to try to count the number of times Coleridge Taylor quotes and transforms the opening phrase of nobody knows the trouble I see before at the end he turns this theme into the familiar eight-note Hiawatha theme we've heard so much of in Hiawatha's Wedding Feast and the death of Minnehaha and we'll hear more of in Hiawatha's departure, most notably in the very last climactic phrase of the work. Note that our performance of the Song of Hiawatha during the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival in Merrill Auditorium included a troupe of five ballet dancers under the direction of choreographer Darrell Moultrie. From time to time during the overture and during the other segments of our performance of Hiawatha, you'll hear the sounds of our dancers. The orchestra of the Longfellow Chorus, Charles Kaufman conductor, performs Hiawatha Part Three, the overture to Hiawatha from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival. Mm -hmm.
we've heard the overture to Hiawatha, part three of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Scenes from the Song of Hiawatha, from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival in Merrill Auditorium, as performed on March 17, 2013, by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman, conductor. You are listening to Main Stage on MPBN, featuring a concert by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, conducted by Charles Kaufman on March 16 and 17, 2013, at Merrill Auditorium in Portland, Maine. These are the radio stations of the Maine Public Broadcasting Network, WMEA, Portland, 90.1, WMEH, Bangor, 90.9, WMEM, Presque Isle, 106.1, WMEP, Camden, 90.5, WMEF, Fort Kent, 106.5, WMED, Callis, 89.7, WMEW Waterville 91.3 and on the web at mpbn.net. We conclude this evening's main stage program from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival with the final segment of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's cantata setting of The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Hiawatha's Departure, recorded in Merrill Auditorium in Portland on March 17, 2013. The conclusion recreates the meeting in 1671 of the Algonquin tribes along Lake Superior in the upper Midwest with the French Jesuit missionary Jacques Marquette, the black robe priest of the poem. Using a good deal of poetic license, Longfellow has based Hiawatha on the Ojibwe legend of Nanabozo, the prophet of Kichimanito, the great spirit. As Longfellow began composing the poem in 1854, he at first thought he would use the title Manabozo, but quickly changed the name of the poem's lead character to Hiawatha. Hiawatha's departure opens as spring arrives along the shores of Lake Superior. In the radiant aria, Spring Had Come, soprano soloist Angela Brown gives voice to Longfellow's list poem depicting flocking birds, the swan, the white goose, the loon, the blue heron, and the grouse. Amid the splendor of spring, however, Hiawatha still grieves for Minnehaha. As sung by tenor soloist Roderick Dixon, Iagu, the boastful storyteller, arrives to tell the people of the strange things he has seen during his travels in the east. A great salty ocean, a huge flying canoe taller than the tallest tree, weapons shooting thunder, and a hundred warriors with white faces and hair on their chins. The people scoff at him. Caw, they say. We do not believe it. Hiawatha knows that what Iagu says is true, however. As sung by baritone soloist Robert Honeysucker, Hiawatha shares his vision in which he foresees crowded nations of white-faced people sweeping westward, scattering the native tribes before them like withered leaves of autumn. This can be avoided, Hiawatha says, only if his people welcome the newcomers and make peace with them. At this point, we hear the Longfellow Chorus dramatically sing the most familiar two lines of Hiawatha by the shores of Gichigumi, by the shining big sea water. This announces the arrival of Father Marquette and his companions in a canoe that at first seems to float above the water in the distance like a pelican or a heron. Longfellow just as well could have set this scene at the village of Norwich Walk, now Madison, Maine, along the banks of the Kennebec River, where one of Marquette's fellow priests, Father Sebastian Rall, arrived by canoe to minister to the Abenaki people in 1694. Greeted by Hiawatha, and as sung by tenor soloist Roderick Dixon, the black robe priest struggles in the Algonquin language to share his Christian message with the tribal leaders, who, in dramatic harmony supplied by Coleridge Taylor, tell him somewhat skeptically, we have listened to your message. We will think on what you tell us. Hiawatha invites the black robe and his entourage to sleep in his wigwam, and promises that his people will protect them, though outside the wigwam, hinting perhaps at the many difficult years of treaties and broken treaties that lie ahead. As dusk settles in, sunbeams shoot spears into the forest that rush in secret ambush and search each thicket. 
While his guests sleep, Hiawatha, as sung by Robert Honeysucker, announces his final departure, first to Nokomis and then to his people, saying that with the arrival of the black robe, his prophecy has been fulfilled. In what might be the first example of riding or here paddling off into the fiery sunset, Hiawatha commands his magic canoe to take him westward into the purple vapors. The rousing final chorus, farewell forever, Hiawatha, might be called a Native American requiem in which not only the people sing, but the forest dark and lonely sighs, the waves rippling upon the margins sob, and the heron, the shushuga, screams farewell. The Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Angela Brown Soprano, Roderick Dixon Tenor, and Robert Honeysucker Baritone, performs Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Hiawatha's Departure from the 2013 Longfellow Choral Festival.
sun so brightly all the day they shine and blossom when you come so far to see us. Never was a lake so tranquil, nor so free from rocks and sand, but for the birds canoe in passing as a mob of the rock and sand pass. Peace of prayer and peace of pardon, peace. 
the purport of his mission to the mother virgin Mary and her blessed son the Savior how he rose from where they laid him walked again with his disciples Send it.
With the conclusion of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Hiawatha's Departure, the members of the audience in Merrill Auditorium give accolade to soloists Angela Brown, soprano, Roderick Dixon, tenor, Robert Honeysucker, baritone, the five dancers of the Longfellow Chorus Dance Ensemble, joined by choreographer Darrell Moultrie, and finally the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman, conductor at the Longfellow Choral Festival. On tonight's main stage program, we've heard parts two, three, and four of Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Scenes from the Song of Hiawatha, The Death of Minnehaha, The Overture to Hiawatha, and Hiawatha's Departure, as performed on March 17, 2013 by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra. Thanks for joining us this evening for Main Stage on MPBN. Tonight's program has been made available to MPBN by the Longfellow Chorus. For more information about Main Stage on MPBN, please visit mpbn.net. For more information about the Longfellow Chorus, visit longfellowchorus.com.